past 10 at start, it's okay? Okay, fine. So, hi, nice to have you, crowded room here. <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, you already heard, I will talk about uh, Typo 3 and Composer. Uh, there are two parts here. We have one part, it's the first one with the slides, it's very theoretical. So, uh, for the beginners, uh, what is Composer and so on. Um, but first, some questions. Uh, who of you already heard something about Composer? Ah, okay, another question. Who, who did not? <laughs> wow, that's cool. And who already worked with that? Oh, okay, why are you here? <laughs> okay, so what is the theoretical part about? So, uh, in the first, some basics. So, uh, uh, how to install Composer. I don't want to say that because there is a documentation online and you all can follow the documentation. It's very, very good. Uh, then, the getting started part. So, uh, join us. <laughs> and the third part is the files and projects. I like I already said in the teaser talks, uh, you can have a Composer JSON file in your extension, maybe in your tear extension. That would be very, very nice. And uh, the project part, so the Composer JSON for your whole Type of 3 project, and some advanced stuff, at least, uh, how to apply patches to the Type of 3 core or every, every other extension you require, <laughs> and uh, how to overwrite platform settings, so when you have uh, your local machine is on PHP 7.2, but you have a deploy server which is on PHP 7, how to, uh, how to tell him that uh, he should deploy something or build something for PHP 7.2. Any questions so far? That's good. So let's start with the basic uh, part. What is Composer? Composer is a dependency packet uh, manager for PHP. It's not that in the sense of YAML or APT, but more than NPM or Bundler. You all know NPM, I guess, right? Yeah, good. And it's a PHP archive, so you can download it and put it on your folder where you want to go and type in your command line composer far and then some commands or you can install it globally so uh, but that is all as I already said uh, described in the documentation it's online the link is on the last slide so you don't need to google for that okay wow getting started I already said there are two files, the composer JSON file and the composer log file. Um, everything you do, you do in the composer JSON part. So uh, you can add it in your, in your IDE or better, you uh, fire up some commands in your command line. The composer log file is only generated by composer install or composer require and so on. Um, and you please do not touch it. So because this in this file, there are the right dependencies in. You can say, okay, I want to uh, require Helmut's uh, console in version 5 dot something, and um, in the composer look, there is uh, the, whole, uh, the right key for the package you want to access, so uh, the right version, the commit uh, key. Genau. I already said there are some comments on the line. These uh, are, the, I guess, the uh, most important ones. There are several more. But uh, we have the comp composer init command. So when you want to start a new project, you can type in composer init, and then you have uh, some stuff where you can put in, you were asked for a name, or did you have a project, or what else. You can enter the license, so it's GPL2 and later or some other stuff you can uh, define first requirements so my extension requires static info tables you can create a pr project which is existing so i want to show that later how to uh, set up a composer type of three package we will use then composer create project require and require dev so when you want to require new extensions some for example you want to use georg ringer's news extension you can Type in composer require, and then there are two ways. For one, that is typo3 tear, which is a typo3 tear news. So, first the uh, window name, then the extension, but it's better you will get some uh, messages on a command line that you use uh, the right GitHub one, which is in with the namespace georgringer.slash news. 
what I will show you later, and require death. Uh, this is only development requirements, so when you want to have uh, unit tests or other things for maybe the mask extension or the mask export that are death requirements. Remove is uh, the opposite. You can remove dependencies from your composer file. Uh, dump autoload. Composer has a really, really hard or cool autoloader, so uh, you don't need to care to require classes in your PHP code. Composer will do that. Um, I will show later in the advanced section how to manipulate the uh, autoloader or how you can uh, add classes to the autoloader which are not required by Composer. Um, the install command. Uh, the install command uh, uses the composer log file and installs all the stuff, the hard-coded stuff there, uh, and versions which are in the composer log file. So it's not using the composer JSON file, but the composer log file. And last, the composer valid. It's good when you're uh, in development mode and you develop your extension and hmm, maybe you work on the composer JSON file and you do not recognize that there is a an error in your file, you can type in on your command line composer valid and you will get a feedback uh, if it is vali valid or not. Questions so far? Good. Then the files in the project. So in your extension, normally there is no composer log file. Uh, but in the extension composer JSON, you defined all the dependencies your extension have got. So uh, if you have for maybe our, our locate extension, it depends on a static info tables. So you can say, okay, this extension requires static info tables from the type of three tier. Then when you require this, so we wait a moment, I guess. No, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, mach mal, glaube ich, ist besser. Lass, lass, mal, lass mal offen, dann geht der Wind durch. Okay, hi, nice to have you. Uh, yeah, you find dependencies. As I said, uh, in your extension composer JSON, you can say, my new extension requires the static info tables extension. And that is the advance that uh, when your project, you say, okay, require my extension, uh, it will also install all dependencies. So it will also install the static info tables but you don't have to say again in your pr uh, project composer JSON require uh, static info tables. Yeah, yeah and it had already some, uh, or had also some metadata for example the author or description what it does, and there are some keywords. Uh, yeah. 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 Do we have to use this two locations for some redundancy? Yeah, yeah, you have to because um, it is already it is also possible to set up pro uh, type of three project project with without uh, composer. And when you go to the ex uh, extension manager, you the data which is displayed there is from the um, xmconf file, not from the uh, composer JSON file. The composer JSON file is only for dependencies and uh, for projects when you have it in uh, for your own Zartes. Yeah, Helmut, can we can say something to that? So yes, currently you need both files if you want uh, your extension to be installed vi via composer. Um, type of free currently already evaluates some things out of the composer file directly. But as Flo Florian already said, um, the XDM conf is still required for type of three and the internals. So in, in general, it is planned uh, to get rid of XDM conf, but there are a lot of technical challenges to, to do so. So for the next, I would say, one or two versions, you have to live with just uh, maintaining both files with some redundancy. Okay. 
Good. Uh, yeah, it includes uh, all the required extension, also the def requirements. Um, oh, there is a sentence not complete. <laughs> Out of complete stuff. Uh, and it's not that different than uh, from the um, composer JSON file in your uh, extension because composer JSON files are straight away. Okay. Some advanced stuff. Oh, that's fast. Okay, we go. You see, when you work with Type of 3 projects and your customer has his own wishes and the Type of 3 core, or maybe you find a, a bug in the core and want to fix it now, you can apply patches. Uh, not uh, You can apply that to all requirements you, uh, you said before. Uh, we use uh, this composer package, CWIGANT's uh, composer patches. Uh, you can type in composer require this and it will install. And uh, within your extra section, you can configure patches. Then you have here Type 3 CMS. So this is uh, a patch for the Type 3 CMS package. You can say, OK, it's for my extension too. Um, then you have some description, what it does. So you can put in here anything you want. You can say ABC or uh, what else. And uh, the path to the patches where it is located uh, from your root. So here it is located under patches, language synchronization .patch. Uh Here it's patches the type of three core. And when you then play, OK, composer install, uh, it will apply this patch after getting the type of three CMS package. So and you get a feedback if a patch is applied or not. So when it's not a could not be applied, composer will fail and stop the rule with an exception. Otherwise, the patch is there. And um, yeah, that's really, really cool. You can do that for all your packages. The autoloader. Every composer package you require is in the autoloader. But it could be the case that you have your own extension which has no composer JSON file and you put it in type of 3 x uh, type of 3 conf x folder and you want to add the autoloader here so this is the psr4 section here you have the vendor name and the namespace of the extension here two slashes very important and then your path from your project file is here and it's all your classes or your PHP file should be in the classes uh, directory of your extension. So what Composer does is he looks into this classes f directory, iterates through all files and subdirectories, and adds these files with namespaces to your Composer autoload file. When you have other extensions, so you don't want to uh, patch the IRFAQ extension because it's so so obsolete and legacy code is in there. You can put all this extension in your type of 3 x uh, conf x directory, adapt the code, and then add it here to the autoloader. And it's also possible for this solar file extension with not public available. Uh, you can place it in your X folder and say, OK, the solar file extension is there. For very, very old extension, there is a class map file. Uh, you remember the xautoload file or class map aliases from old extensions? There is also possible to add these files to your composer autoload with class map, and then you can put here every class or uh, extension you need. Questions? Good. Repositories. For default, when you uh, create a new Type of 3 project, you have this repository in there. It's the data of a uh, composer uh, from the Type of 3 project, which is located under composer.typeof3.org. Um, but when you have your own extension, so we have our own SATIS, uh, we say, OK, there is another composer where you can look at it. It is located here. So then our extensions, which we develop, are getting from there. And last but not least, you can also add some GitHub re requirements, which should normally be there, so you don't need that. But in some cases, you say, OK, we have a version control system here, and the URL is this one. So when you get want to get my direct mail, it's that. But for 
normally you don't need that because all the GitHub extensions with the valid composer JSON should be uh, available if packages. Okay, configuration. Uh, I already said in the beginning that uh, there might be the case that you develop under PHP 7.0, which is defined here, but your deploy server or other server you use uh, where the composer file is installed or where, where a composer install runs could be under PHP 7.2 or what else, something newer. And maybe you have dependencies in your extension that your extension only is working on PHP 5.5 to 7.0.9.9 or so, and uh, composer install will fail then on the 7.2 machine because uh, your, your environment is 7.2 and uh, composer sees, okay, this extension only works under 7.0, so pff, fail. You can prevent that by defining the platform. Then on the composer install, composer thinks, okay, we have a, a PHP 7.0 on this machine and it runs through. So it doesn't know that it is a 7.2 uh, on the machine. And if you have broken SSL certificates or so in your repository section, which I said before, you can uh, say here, uh, for example, secure HTTP faults, so it will not break when there is a mismatch or anything else in your SSL certificates. Okay. Yeah, the link list here, it's uh, very, very short because all documentation is here and the best documentation you find in existing extensions. So just look what extension do you have installed, go through it, find the composer JSON file and see what it, how it looks like. You can learn from that, you see, hmm, okay, there is some more metadata possible, the author section could also have the email of the author, not only the name and your yeah, go through it, you find anything, it's quite ugly, but good. <laughs> okay, questions so far, because otherwise I want to start with the hands up part. Good. to the secure HTTPS ah. uh, equals false, so I, I really wouldn't recommend that yeah. because it means you disable security, which means uh, you could end up getting packages you don't want to. <laughs> so um, I'd rather recommend to fix uh, the error case when you see OpenSSL errors. So one reason could be that your laptop or your PHP installation on your laptop um, can't uh, or isn't up to date and can't uh, can or d doesn't know the the current uh, recent CAs, um, or that indeed one dependency is on some repository with a broken SSL certificate, and then I would rather not use that than disabling security. There. And there is uh, you can just Google it. We had some issues with uh, PHP and Composer regarding SSL um, actually when type of free org and composer type of free org change their <laughs> certificate. Um, but if you Google type of free composer SSL, <laughs> then you can find an article from the server team how what you have to do on your machine or uh, yeah, on your machine or your uh, build machines or whatever, depending on the operating system. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So let's start. I have installed the Composer globally, so I can only type in Composer. Otherwise, you have to put in the, the path where your Composer far I archive is located. <coughs> now I want to create a new project, and I want to create the project type of 3 CMM CMS-based distribution in the newest version. And it should be installed in my directory t3dd18. And Let's go. When the Wi-Fi is working, it should work. Is the Wi-Fi working here? Yeah. 
Ah, wow. Now you see uh, it installed the Diapos 3 base, CMS base distribution in the version, version 9.3.1 because uh, I don't define any version I want to get, so it gets the latest stable here. You see here, updating dependencies including require dev uh, here. So it will also d uh, install now all dev requirements. When you want to prevent that, you can say sla uh, minus minus uh, no dev, then it would not install the dev requirements. Okay, that's it. Here, some f uh, fixments for uh, the folders which are not present here. And then finally, I can go to T3DD. And what is here? You see, okay, wow. Here are some files, more files than the composer JSON and the composer log file. There's alwa also a readme, the license file. Then you have uh, the vendor where all uh, composer packages are located in. You have var and the public. The public is uh, an untypus 3 9, the file, I can go to it, where your uh, access your web root is in. You see there is a file admin, the index, PHP, the typos 3 folder, typos 3 conf, and typos 3 temp, and you see no symlinks anymore. So what is in that? The repository section is here. And I said, okay, by default, when you create a composer typos 3 package, er, it is a uh, the composer and the composer.typos3.org. It has the name typos3 CMS based distribution, so uh, that's what I type in before. Description is, hey, I'm the typos3 CMS based dis distribution, and my license is JPL2 or later. Uh, you might find something like GPL minus 2.0 uh, plus, but that's not valid anymore, so uh, you have to put in uh, minus or minus later. The config is here, you see, platform, because type of 3, 9 for the moment uh, requires PHP 7.2. It is set to PHP 7.2 here. And there are some requirements in there by default. You see, wow, Helmut's console there is there. And wow, that's, mm, I guess, for the most of you new, because um, now while you have the, or for, older projects with uh, type of 3.8 or so, you have mostly only the requirements type of 3 sl slash CMS. And all the core extensions came with this package. Here, it's quite fine, and you can use this list later on. I guess Helmut will show something about uh, Neo Console for that, uh, what it means that there are these extensions here. So it, it's only the type of 3 minimal, which is only the core, not the core extensions. And then you have here CMS minus, uh, so these are the core extensions. You have the admin panel, the backend log, the backend users, the front end login, fluid style content, and so on. So when you don't want to use this node, for example, you can type in your command line composer remove uh, type of three CMS minus this node, and it removes this line here. If you, yeah. Just <coughs> for my knowledge, and the, this package, for example, CMS CEO, is required by the package that you are installing, and then you say you can remove it. It's going to accept the fact that you are going, you are removing something required or not. Uh, you have here one distribution is called so, uh, and you can adapt that. So this is uh, only the recommend stuff. But if you don't want to have it because you don't want to use the admin pane now. Okay, that's good. But you want to do not want to use this node stuff. You can remove it here. Uh, when you do this in your extension, so when you go to typos 3 conf ext and do a composer remove uh, static info tables from your extension, that would not affect anything because by the next composer insert of your project, the dependency is already there or will be there again because the extension says, okay, I require this. Okay. Uh, here are some fancy stuff, the script se section, uh, where some 
Type of 3CMS scripts run. So it is install the fixed folder structure. You s remember the notices that you, uh, you get b after the create project. So it fixes the folder structure and uh, it generates already a package states. So that's the part I said before where I asked Helmut if he wants to say uh, something about the stuff why all the extensions are here. Yeah. And something after the post outer load dump. Okay, good. So the composer log file. Wow, that's really confusing, but uh, let's find. Uh, here is placed handles console. So the content here is nearly that what Helmut says in his console, uh, okay, I require this one. I require PHP in this version, Symfony in that. And some additional stuff here is a source. It's a Git repository, and it's located here. So you see it's uh, hosted, uh, pushed on GitHub. And the reference is the commit message. So he will only install this specific commit and okay it's here it's the version 5.4.0 when you go back to your composer json file there you see there is no hard uh, version set here is only set okay require the console in 5.3 and uh, the, till, uh, the how is it called in english right uh, said okay just go to the last level here and it's okay when you install uh, the version 5.4 but it will not install something like 5.2 so when you say require this in version 5.9 it will not or it will fail because it will not find a version which is 5.9 I need an autoloader here. Okay, you see, beside of the require and the re require dev section, there is already a suggest se uh, the suggest section. Uh, you have all this stuff all in your XEM con file where you say, okay, r I suggest to install the dev log or here the Symfony YAML stuff to parse some YAML. And uh, you can also define conflicts in there. So when you say my extension has a conflict with uh, Helmut's console, mm, that would be very, very bad <laughs> because uh, then you can't install Typo 3. So, um, or another example, you have the conflict with the static info tables in version 6.2. You cannot install the static info tables in version 6.2 and your extension. Then it will fail and say, okay, here I have a conflict. Please check your composer JSON file and uh, solve that problem. There. Good. Okay, let's require some stuff. Uh, do anybody know the uh, extension which is compatible with Type 3 9? <laughs> <laughs> so let's check. Oh wow! It is so you see here the info. Your composer JSON file is now uh, updated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aha! So you see he updated it, and then he said, "Okay, uh, I uh, roll back here." And wow, wow, wow! Here, this is some fancy stuff. Where is? So your requirements could not be resolved to an installable set of packages. So he wants to, or he sees, okay, I require this in 7.0 and he finds 7.0.5. Okay, I don't install it. He falls back to 7.4.3.2.1 and then he tries to remove Doctrine as 2.8 because other packages, the core, 
requires a doctrine DBL in uh, two five something. He said, okay, hmm. try to install something else, and then he will fail because the dependency are not matching. So bad example. <laughs> But we can uh, install some backend packages. I don't know. I'm not sure if the scheduler is already installed. It is? Okay. It is Henry Wright because here you say nothing installed or updated and the post scripts ran again. But we can remove try to remove this one. Oh. <laughs> no, that's only a notification. <laughs> yeah, it works. So this is only uh, something uh, in the CMS project. They require also Helmut's console, but Helmut's console is already required in your uh, in our root package. So it's only a notice that uh, he won't do anything. He ignores that. And you see here, the CMS this node now is um, removed. He rewrites the log file, so he removes the section of the sys node extension, and then he dumps the auto load. So he removes all the sysnode uh, classes from the auto loader, and then our post scripts are here. When we now take a look in the composer JSON file, here, there the sysnode section is missing. Okay, now let's say something weird stuff. We only want to whip, require. Good. Now it insert that. Uh, what Composer also has is a cache. So uh, when you have multiple projects on your machine, on your deploy server or what else, and every package requires Type of 3 CMS, you don't want to download the Type of 3 CMS whole project every time. So uh, Composer caches this uh, version stuff in uh, .cache directory and um, here, when you next time want to install that, it will put it from the cache, not from the remote package. Okay, so now it's here. I required this as dev dependency. So when we take now a look back in the composer JSON file, we don't want find this this node here, but we have a section here. It is called require dev, and you see there is the this node extension located. So now we try to install <coughs> our Type 3 without development de dependencies. And you see here, okay, wow, why that? It is removing the CMS sysnode stuff because we say it's a dev dependency and now we have no dev, so we are um, maybe on production system or of one preview system, which should not have these uh, development dependencies. It is removing that. When I do a composer install without the minus minus no dev, it will install it again, because by default it will install all the dev dependencies on the machine.
So what else can we do? Mm. We can rewrite only the autoload file with uh, dump autoload or uh, you can, I guess it's okay when this minus is missing. Uh, then type of three only will generate the new autoload file, which is located under vendor. Here you see some autoload sections, and we can now look in this PH PSR4 PHP. You see here is already an array in it where you say, okay, type of three CMS setup is located in the base tier public type of three sysx setup classes. So all files are then loaded from there. So only that you see that, please do not edit this file in your IDE because it will be overwritten by next composer install or update. Okay. Mm, nine minutes left, what can we do? Questions so far? Can you just say one word about the packages.org website and what exactly is the purpose of that website in, in the Composer world? Sorry, louder, please. Pa packages.org. Yeah. What exactly is the use of that website? When do we have to put our project on that website or not? Uh, you can put it on that when you want to uh, have it available publicly. So uh, you maybe have the case that your extensions are uh, not or should not be available publicly because you want to uh, release the, or, uh, the code or so, then you can use your private SATIS or you can, as I said in the slides, uh, you can also uh, use um, version control system as uh, re re uh, repository. So you say, okay, VCS and it's located on a good or GitHub or your Bitbucket or your local Git, what else? Uh, so then there is nothing on packages.org and only you can install that when it's the repository is not public available. Okay. Um, just a few um, few words on that. So uh, as you said already, packages is the public uh, package repository for Composer. So if you type Composer require any name, uh, Composer looks at this website or this registry. Um, and specifically, specifically for type of three uh, extensions, we, uh, we had this TER, this type of three extension repository, which uh, was created when Composer didn't exist yet. Um, but now, comp since Composer exists, uh, the general re recommendation for extension developers who like to publish their extensions is to not only upload it to, uh, to TER, which means if you upload it, it to TER, it, it means that uh, users using Type 3 without Composer can get it. Uh, but if you want that also users that are using Composer effectively uh, can require your extension, it is recommended that you also register it on Packagist. And maybe it's good to, to um, receive your vendor in the, comp the company vendor name. The company vendor. Packagist. Yeah. Okay, when there are no questions, I think we're finished. Okay, thank you.